Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a tower defense game inspired by, or I guess my reference material is tower defense. Um, this is part four, I believe, and stuff. Part four, as you can see by the title, is this uh part includes uh what is it called? Um, I forgot. Oh, waves. Yes, 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 waves. Okay, so you guys are in another drill if you haven't watched part one part two part three go watch those first three parts you're going to be confused have a lot of stuff set up now i just want to clarify something i know the title says waves but like i haven't made like a wave one wave two, wave three we're going to get into that and stuff we're going to make it more advanced as we you know move along and stuff this is just an introductory way of going to have constant enemies and stuff like that yeah we're going to continue to add on stuff change some things to make it more like a proper tower defense game but yeah so let's go ahead and get straight into it oh before i do thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have been showing on my channel so if y'all been going crazy in the videos and stuff i really do appreciate it this um y'all been showing lots of love on this uh series y'all really love the series which i love and yeah but anyway let's go ahead and get straight into it okay so First things first, right? We're gonna have to make some changes to, to this. Okay. So first things first, you wanna find all the parts that are the conveyor, right? You guys remember we have our invisible walls, we have our uh enemy gate and player gate, right? And then we have our uh flat our flat uh tiles or parts, whatever you want to call them. These are gonna be our conveyor parts, right? Because it's like a conveyor. So I actually didn't realize this until I went to because like in all honesty, I was struggling for like a day trying to figure out uh, uh how to get the enemies to move from this gate to the other gate i honestly thought they were using pathfinding and they scripted each individual en uh, enemy to actually like walk the path but then i realized it's just like a, it's just a tycoon like, you guys know how in tycoon games they have like those conveyor belts where like parts just drop and then it just you know the velocity is changed so that the parts just slide down you know you know what i'm saying it's the exact same concept and i was just like oh bet let me just try that and it works but anyway so to make this work right like i said name all of them conveyor you want them all to have the same name now you might experience this issue which i will bring this up uh, later on when we script the conveyor belt so like velocity so that when uh you know the enemies drop down from here and then they're supposed to slide this way that way and then that way to our uh, player gate and stuff you may experience issues where like they're sliding the wrong way like for example the enemy is supposed to go from this gate and it's supposed to walk it's supposed to like slide straight say for instance um they slide like they don't move which which means they're like sliding against the red gate so they're going in this direction all you have to do is find the conveyor part and just rotate it that's all you got to do is just rotate it the opposite direction and stuff obviously you know maybe a little bit of struggle but yeah all you got to do is just oh didn't mean to do that all you got to do is just rotate it until um the enemies are moving in the right direction i just wanted to let people know in case they had any in case they were struggling with that but anyway <clears throat> Moving on to the player gate, we have to add some things to this, right? So we need to go ahead and insert a number value into it. So boom, let's go ahead and drop a number value. You're going to rename this number value to health. This is going to be health that is displayed. Uh, the player, you know, the player's uh, gate health. So that will be displayed overhead. Um, so in the in the game, it's 500, or at least for the map I was on, it's 500. I don't know if it's different depending on the map, but yeah, it was 500 there and stuff. Uh, but of course, you guys can set this to whatever you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert a billboard GUI into the player gate. <clears throat> I'm going to rename this billboard GUI to health GUI, right? As for the properties, size is going to be 5, 0, 1.5, 0. <clears throat> and then the um, stud offset is going to be, or sorry, studs offset is going to be 0, 5, 0. So which means it'll be, uh, you know, a little bit above it, right? And then I'm going to, I think that was all the, yeah, I believe that was all the properties. Then I'm going to insert a text label into the health GUI. And then of course, we're going to rename this health text label. You already know, let's do some things. Let's do stuff like this. Okay. So the whole point is we want the background color to be, uh, you know, green, of course, since this is health. I do want it to have a good border. So I have to do like inside. Yeah. So I do want it to have a border. Of course, we want it to increase the size of the text label. So let's do one comma zero comma one comma okay, one comma zero comma one comma zero. So boom, there we go. So like that, right? So we're gonna have the size like that, and then position will just remain the same. We have oh, that's what they're on text health text label, right? And then come down here, bold text, rich text, scale the text. You can make the text color white. And then um, you can make the text stroke transparency black as well. And then uh, by default, you can just have it set to health 
colon um whatever you know the starting health is so 500 out of 500 right so i'd have it like that and then we'll update this as our health is uh, changed right <clears throat> so to my knowledge health you can't regenerate health i don't know if like the gate gets more health like after every wave if it does someone let me know like i don't i honestly didn't check this or that but you know, yeah i'll add that in the future possibly anyway we're then going to head on over to services. We're done with all the stuff in the workspace, right? We're going to actually insert another folder, but let's save ourselves some time. Let's control D the units folder, and then we're going to rename this folder to enemy. So, or sorry, not enemy, enemy units and stuff, right? So just like the units folder, this is going to be enemy units. Cause I, rec I do realize that there are different enemies inside of the, um, you know, inside of tower defense games that like some have more health than others. So we're going to need, you know, different enemies. Now I'm only going to start off with one. Well, we can add more in the future, but for now we're just going to start off with one. So all I'm simply going to do is just, of course, rename this to just uh, enemy, like, you know, just basic enemy. And then of course I'm just going to change the colors. I just want, I honestly just wanted them all to have different colors. Just, you know, just cause honestly. So I'll make this one like blue, I guess. Oh wait, no, I already made one that was blue. I guess we'll do black. Black. Oh, wrong one black 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 okay so then i'm going to put the enemy inside of the enemy units older right and then we have our enemy ready to go now we can go ahead and actually get to the actual scripting we're done with all the other stuff we did we actually didn't need to make any changes to the local script we just have to make changes to the server script oh also inside of sound servers you're gonna need to get a hit sound hit kill slash punch shot gunshot whatever it doesn't matter whatever type of sound this is a sound that's going to play whenever um whenever the uh the you know the what, what are they called the oh the units whenever you spawn a unit down to like defend you know the gate and stuff this is the sound they're going to make every time like they shoot on um, one of the enemies and stuff so yeah <clears throat> so let's open up the server script we got to add some things first we had to create some variables so after the teleport service we're going to of course get the sound service so local ss is equal to game get service sound service then you're going to go right after the core event and then we're going to create a variable for the enemy units folder so enemy units is equal to game that server storage wait for child enemy units right then i'm going to go down here we're going to scroll down we're going to go we're going to go right here so pretty much right after the uh right after we fire the remote event for you know the joined event we're going to create a while loop. we're going to say while to do enter and then I'm going to uh, clone the enemy. So local enemy is equal to enemy units dot enemy clone. Then we're going to say enemy pivot to workspace dot enemy gate dot C frame. And then we're going to say times C frame dot new negative one comma negative one comma five. Now this may not spawn the enemy exactly where you need them to. And if that's the case, it's fine. Just adjust these numbers that need be X is left and right. Y is up and down and uh, Z is forward and backward. Adjust these numbers as, as need be, right? Cause I cannot tell you where, like how to adjust this. You have to mess around with the numbers until it spawns quickly. I honestly can't tell you cause I don't know in what part of the 3d plane, the, um, uh, the your um your gates are and stuff like that but anyway <clears throat> we're then going to say enemy parent enemy sorry enemy dot parent is equal to workspace so we're going to parent to the workspace after setting a c frame and then of course we're going to add a test that way so this is up to you for the duration i'm just going to put three seconds in between right <clears throat> so then we're going to go ahead and scroll down here <clears throat> and add some stuff here so right here we're going to just skip we're just going to skip a line cycle right after we create the unit and stuff the unit uh variable and stuff here's the part where we're going to uh have it so that the unit can defend for you and stuff like that so we're gonna say while unit and stuff pretty much while the unit you know exists and stuff right so while you're know, gonna use a for i loop so for i v and pairs loop so for i comma v and pairs you're then gonna say workspace get children we're gonna get all children and then we're just gonna check to make sure that they're enemies so if v dot name is equal to enemy right if Vita name is equal to enemy, oh sorry, if Vita name is equal to enemy and, and, and in parentheses, you're going to just simply say unit dot humanoid root part dot position minus, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, enemy, or not enemy, V dot humanoid root part dot position. Then go on the outside and say dot magnitude. 
and then you're just simply gonna say less than equal to whatever number you want i saw that tw i found that 20 actually works pretty well it's a nice range the this uh, value right here is going to be your range and stuff so the bigger the number the bigger the range that they'll have and stuff then enter then you're gonna say v dot humanoid that health is less than equal to 25 so that's how much damage we're going to do but again these values are adjustable and stuff so all depends on you guys then we're going to put a break this is so that they can only damage them one time it's because if we didn't if we left this breakout it would just keep damaging them over and over so long as like they're within range and stuff right and then of course we want a cooldown. so let's wait one let's put you know one let's have it at one second intervals let's have so it damages them in one second intervals then we're going to go after this and we're going to create a another four IV in pairs loop so this time i'm going to say four i comma v in pairs i'm going to say workspace get children once again <clears throat> i'm going to say if v dot name is equal to quotation marks player eight right then enter oh sorry and enter right you're going to say v dot touched connect function close or sorry in parentheses put hit and enter you're then going to say if hit that parent so if hit that parent exists pretty much this is a check to make sure that it is a character of sorts whether it be you know the player touching it or the uh or an enemy right so if hit that parent and enemy units regular brackets or sorry not really right find first child Find first child hit that parent a name so we so this is how we confront it there an enemy then enter you're then going to say hit that parent destroy we know it's an enemy now this pretty much is when the enemies reach your player gate and stuff because then you know they'll be destroyed and will uh and the gate will take some damage so then you'll say workspace dot player gate dot health dot value is less than equal to i saw in the game that it does 100 damage again all adjustable values do whatever you, you know set, set it to whatever you want then we're going to use an if statement we're going to see if workspace dot player gate dot health that value is less than equal to zero this is just a double check to see if like you know the, the player pretty much lost the game so if that is the case we're going to say four iv in pairs game dot players get chosen we can do this because the only players inside of the game would be you know the players currently playing and stuff so so yeah we can just do cps teleport um and they're gonna get your, your second place now remember this is why i was saying it's gonna be a little different until you know we finalize everything so the way i set it up is so that if the player gate is you know destroyed they lose all their health they're going to be set, sent back to the lobby and then they'll, you know they'll hop back on the thing queue up and then come back to a new server and stuff that's the way i have it now but of course we'll have a incremental wave system in the future but yeah so to get your lobby place remember same thing we did before asset manager go to places but this time make sure you get you know your lobby not your second place so then we're just gonna control v right put it in there and then put the player right there boom so you get two ends then you're simply just gonna say workspace dot player gate dot health gy or sorry that health wait is wait yeah, yeah health gy that health text table that text is equal to in quotation marks you're going to say uh what was it oh yeah in quotation marks you're going to say health colon space dot 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 and then you're going to say workspace dot player gate dot health dot value dot 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 quotation marks uh forward yeah the forward slash and then you know your max health value right so 500 right this is pretty much that it checks to see uh ahead of time if they have if the gate if pretty much the players lost the game and if it does it'll send them back to the lobby if they haven't this nothing will happen here they won't be teleported and then it'll just update the health and then things will just move on from there then we have one one last while loop so while true do enter and then you're gonna say four i comma v in pairs you're gonna say workspace get children enter right and then you're gonna say if v dot name here is the conveyor part here's how to make the conveyors uh make them able to carry to carry the enemies so if your name is equal to conveyor, then enter. You're gonna say v dot velocity is equal to v dot c frame dot look vector times. Now the bigger than now the bigger than this number is, the faster uh, it'll move them along. Obviously, you want it to like kind of stroll down, not like you know super speed type thing. So I find that 15 works good for that. So you're gonna skip the two ends, then you're gonna do the test that way, test that way 0 0.2 seconds. You could also do 0 0.1 if you wanted to, but yeah. Then let me just okay, I'm good. Then let's go ahead and test to make sure everything works. Um, as always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts and models, you guys can become either a channel member or a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. 
highly recommend it stuff so as you guys can clearly see the enemies are the enemies are moving and stuff boom now i do actually have to go i have to go get the uh the what's it called i have to go get the um i have to test an actual server to see the whole thing you know with okay there we go perfect okay so we know that th that it works and obviously by now i would have been kicked out of the server so this isn't an issue i would have been kicked out of the server by now so yeah so the enemies are spawning in they're moving on the track remember what i said guys remember if they're like say instead of going forward they're going like this direction flip it all you gotta do is just rotate them or if they're supposed to go this way but they're going that way just rotate them right now we do have to go test this in actual server so y'all give me a second i have to go pull up my no cap studio place and stuff so because remember we have to go to the lobby first then we have to equip units we have to equip units then we have to teleport over to the main, um, or not the main, just the lobby place. I'm just trying to lobby. We've teleported to the second place. Okay, there we go. So then we are back. Boom, right? Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and then equip all my units. Then I'm going to hop on the teleport pad, and then we're just going to have to wait, you know, a small little 15 seconds until we teleport over there. And then I'll test uh, the units so that I can place all the units down and ensure that, uh, you know, they do damage. Uh, as long as the enemy is within range one that they're you know doing damage and two making sure they're doing damage when they're supposed to you know like when they're within range and stuff not they're not just you know shooting enemies from afar and stuff like that but it should be teleporting me any second now there we go and i've arrived okay perfect you guys see the enemies let me go ahead and play some okay so boom there we go we have the yep there we go you guys see they're attacking so boom oh well i put them on top of the wall instead by mistake but yeah so see for example right you guys see how he has to come in range like if i put one like over here for example right if i put one like watch this you see he didn't take any oh well i that well i lost and then i came back but anyway it doesn't matter so everything works clearly but my point is that you guys saw how he, the enemies that were that was far away couldn't damage that one because he wasn't within range so that's how everything works and stuff but yeah so if you guys enjoyed this video definitely leave a like subscribe if you're new if you enjoyed this this video just you know let me know in the comments you're enjoying that you want the series to continue i for sure got y'all because i see a lot of people love the series and i enjoy making the series so i for sure got y'all with some more videos along so keep showing the series some love let me know of anything you want to see in the, in the future parts in the comments and stuff but yeah thank you guys for watching the video i appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next video